Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Hope you figured that out by now. Hope I figured that out by now. Anyway, I just finished up doing the caliper replacement on my 1997 Subaru Legacy and this brought something to mind. It said to me, you know what Eric? I'm sure a lot of people are curious about what is inside a caliper and how it actually works. And I thought, you know what? Why don't we show them? So I'm gonna take this opportunity today to uh, possibly ruin a core and give you some insight into the insides of a caliper and how a caliper works. All right, here we have one of the front calipers off my Subaru Legacy. I'm gonna take the bracket off. Set that aside because we don't need it. And this, this right here is the meat and potatoes about how everything in the caliper works. This outer seal is a dust boot. So it is not, well, I'm not gonna say it's not critical to the function of the caliper, but it uh, basically keeps the dirt and grime from getting inside the caliper. In fact, oftentimes when you see that this dust boot has been compromised, you'll find a failed caliper. It's because corrosion and such is allowed to get down in here and work its way into that piston. I don't know if I'll be able to get this out of here yet or not. I'm sure as heck gonna try. Now, I have hopes that this piston is gonna come out. If it doesn't, I'll bail on this video and you can yell at me all you like. But if it does, hey, that'll be awesome. So I'm gonna take off my plug that was in here and take compressed air. And as you saw in the beginning of the video, I, I have my uh, uh, glasses on. And don't put your finger here, okay, when you do this. Uh, try to hold the caliper in such a way to where your fingers aren't coming out. Sometimes you can put like a brake pad in here or something like that, but keep your fingers away from this area. And if we're lucky, that will happen. There is our caliper piston. And this is the guy that I was talking about that you may have to replace. Look at that rust. When that gets all pitted like that, it won't seal right. And it needs to seal right in order for the caliper to work. Now, we can come inside here. See all the grossness and everything down inside there. There you go. So a caliper, brake caliper is actually a rather simple machine. We can hopefully remove our dust boot. I say hopefully. I don't suppose it really matters because if you were doing this for real, you'd be replacing these dust seals. But the real guy that I want you to see is actually this guy right here. Because this right here is what makes a caliper work. Everything about your caliper is that <laughs> in the piston. The dust boot, well, you're going to have to just basically peel the dust boot out of here. Oh, there it goes. There you go. So I successfully removed the dust boot and the square cut seal. So that's, that's all that's down in there. So how does this work? Well, this is the coolest part of the whole thing, okay? This is the square cut seal. And as you can see, it is square. Hence the, the name, get it? The way the square cut seal works, is it sits inside that board just like I showed you and on this piston. As you apply the brakes, brake fluid, the force of the brake fluid comes in behind this piston and forces it in towards the brake pads. This square cut seal just sort of sits there inside that bore but as this piston moves forward the square cut seal sort of rolls a little bit. It rolls with the piston and then when you release your foot off the brake pedal what happens is is this, this tension that's created by this seal that's rolled over on its corner like that goes back to rest, and as it does, it pulls the piston back into place, or just pulls the piston back ever so slightly. Now over time, your brake pads wear, this piston goes farther and farther out, that's why you have to push it in when you're done, uh, doing, when you're doing a brake job, but that is in essence the long and the short of how it works. So, square cut seal twists and rolls forward, 
And as soon as you release pressure on the back of the piston, it rolls back and pulls the piston along with it. So this is like the, the retracting spring for the caliper. It's kind of cool. But this right here is pretty much the heart and soul of the caliper. This just keeps out dirt, gunk, and gook. And you can see where down inside the brake fluid comes through that hole, enters the caliper, and pushes against here. So, if you were going to rebuild this, you'd want to clean this piston all up. However, once again, like I said, if this is all rusted and pitted up, then it's not likely that you'll be able to get this to a point where it's actually going to seal again. And that's the big problem. But you can buy a caliper rebuild kit, which is pretty much that and some washers. <laughs> really cheap. But if you end up having to buy a piston, you might as well get a caliper, you know? So I don't often do this unless this is like some rare whatever and it's going to be, you know, cost prohibitive to, to purchase new parts. So I only do this if I absolutely have to. And if first thing you put in is the square cut seal and lubricate it just vigorous, well, not vigorously. Um, let's see, what's the word? Really lubricate this with brake fluid. Every, everything that you do with this, lubricate with brake fluid, nothing else. Um, so don't, don't put grease on this or anything else. And you can kind of see like maybe why my caliper was bad. You see that fit right there against that piston? I know when it's inside the bore, it's not going to be like that, but it looks like this thing got swelled up a little bit. And as a result, it's probably causing this piston to bind, which if you watch the caliper replacement video, um, you'll see why. Anyway, that's some cool stuff. One last thought here is, uh, before I close this out, if this caliper won't come out with the air pressure, um, the other way to do this is to basically screw in a zerk fitting into here and pump grease into this until this comes out. The grease will work a little better than compressed air because the grease will not compress like compressed air will. So uh, if this doesn't work, you got to pump this full of grease to get the piston out. Calipers, who knew? Now, a rear caliper is going to be different. In fact, those come in all shapes and sizes, but front calipers, this is pretty much it. Even if it's dual piston, it's, it's the same thing times two. Uh, rear calipers, on the other hand, have mechanisms on the inside sometimes for the parking brake assembly, which makes them a little more complicated. But this is the basic operation of, of your standard caliper. And once again, it's this guy right here, this square cut seal. And the way it rolls up and pulls the piston back, that makes the caliper work. So if you've got a problem with the caliper, it's likely a problem between the uh, piston and that square cut seal, which is the issue. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. I hope this information was useful and entertaining to you. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, where if you have automotive questions, I ask that you type in a couple of keywords to the search function. Should you not get an answer there when you hit search, uh, feel free to sign up for our forum. It's free, and we'd be happy to try and answer your questions there. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, um, and I will close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. And I will see you next time.